Well, hi there, I'm Beatty Carmichael. I am uh, the, actually the creator of AgentDominator.info and we've been working with real estate agent for a number of years and, uh, and I want to share some tips and ideas on, on real estate letters to prospective sellers that can probably put your business into overdrive. And I want to talk about a couple of key ingredients. You'll see me periodically looking down at my cheat sheet, so I apologize for that, but I just want to make sure I stay on target and on task. Uh, with this. But as you're looking at creating uh, letters that actually work, you have to uh, kind of understand what, what are the key ingredients. And it depends really kind of uh, on what type of letter you're doing. There are basically two types of letters. One is what I call the teaser letter that's designed to get those people who are thinking about selling to actually raise their hand for you so you can pick up the phone and call them or drop by and say hello and make sure that you get there before any other agent. The other type of letter is what I call the persuasion letter. This is the type of letter that you send out and all it's designed to do is persuade people to then pick up the phone and call you when they're ready to sell. So whether you want to be proactive or reactive in what you're doing uh, it makes a big difference in how this is going. And before we get too far into this, I do want to say one other thing and that is that the list that you use is, is also important, okay? One of the best lists you can go after is your personal list. So if you made a list of people who know you, that already trust you, you'll get a much higher response rate in, in either type of scenario than you do if you go after like maybe just a neighborhood. But it works both ways. So uh, uh, as we talk about this, the first thing we have to look at is where are the pros and cons of the teaser letter and the persuasion letter. And we've tested it both ways. And here's how I can tell you exactly the pros and cons, okay? Let's talk about the advantages first. The teaser letter, the big advantage is you get to identify who's thinking about selling. The downside is not everyone who's thinking about selling is going to respond, okay? So, um, uh, uh, but it's enough to typically to get you out there and get some transactions under your belt uh, pretty quickly, uh, relatively speaking. The persuasion letter, uh, the advantage of that is it makes a much wider reaching impact, okay? Uh, you're going to impact a lot more people with your persuasion letter, which over the long term, if you're sending out persuasion letters uh, on a consistent basis, it's going to allow you to get a lot more come list me now phone calls. So there's pros and cons. If I were to advise you as a consultant, I would say create a campaign where you start off with teaser letters to get sales now intersperse some persuasion letters and then flip-flop it so you have more persuasion letters you know in months eight nine or ten and a few a few less on the teaser letters uh, uh, so that's just kind of a, a real quick thing so then the question is how do you do them so let's talk real quickly about the teaser letter okay so the teaser letter in marketing is known as a direct response letter all we're looking for is someone to do a direct response the key to the direct response, if you want to get great results, is you want to offer them something that they can respond to without any fear of a salesperson, i.e. you, calling them back and trying to get in front of them, okay? So if you, if you require them to have to contact you or email me for this report or go to this website and fill out your information before I give you the report, uh, or whatever information you're looking for, then at that point you're going to dramatically restrict how many people actually respond. So the art of the teaser letter is to create something that allows people to respond freely without any recognition that they're being tracked. And then on the back side you've got to have a way to track them so then you can follow up with them and be proactive. So let's talk about uh, these two components. So you have on the teaser letter, you have basically the offer that's going to get them to respond, and then you have the tracking process that allows you to identify who they are. And the simplest thing is, um, uh, probably the simplest offer is what a realtor client of mine shared. He said um, he had a client, a buyer client, that wanted to buy one of several houses. They weren't on the market. He said, if I could buy any house, that'd be the house I'd want to buy. So my client actually wrote a letter that says, I have a client that's interested in buying your home. Are you interested in selling it? If so, can you please call me? And he put that in the mailboxes of these different people. You know what happened? He found people thinking about selling. 
they called them up and said, yeah, I'm interested in selling. Tell me about what your client is doing, okay? So that's one way you could do a prospective client, uh, a prospective letter to find sellers, is say, I have a client who's interested in your home, okay? Now, sometimes we, you don't have a client that's interested in that person's home, and then you don't want to be dishonest. So here's a way that you can take it and, and make it work a little bit better. You can say, hey, I have clients who may be willing to buy your home immediately because of the type of clients they are. Uh, and you can explain in the letter, I have clients that are looking in this area all the time. Uh, it's hard to find the exact house, and, uh, but I know that they're interested in your specific area. If you're thinking about selling, I may be able to get your home sold immediately because of these type of buyers I work with. Give me a call and let me know and I'll tell you specifically what they're looking for and if your house is a fit then we'll talk further. So that's going to get them calling you. However, if you want to open up the spigot a little bit more to get more people responding, then you send them to a toll-free number, what's called a call capture number. And you say, call this toll-free number. I put a short recording on what these people are looking for. So now you have homeowners calling up in the security of their own home, knowing that they're not calling a live salesperson, and they called that toll-free number. You have a, re a short recording with uh, uh, realistic type of information that these buyers that you have are looking for, what type of homes, what type of characteristics within the home, so that you can offer something of value. But the most important thing is you're now capturing their caller ID of those people that are calling in, and then you can pick up the phone and call them back, okay? So that's the teaser letter. The way we do it with our clients is we've actually developed uh, some higher-end technology, and we send them to a website that uses a, a special URL that tracks specifically which home that they're responding from. So they can now just go visit a website to get the information. So that's a teaser letter. Another way you can use a teaser letter is with the home valuation websites. Okay, so you can get these all over the place. And you can offer in your uh, letter to prospective sellers a way to find out, you know, if you're thinking about selling your home, here's an easy way to find out what your home is worth. Go to whatsmyhomeworth.com or whatever domain you set your website up on. Okay, and now as people go there, the home valuation websites are designed to identify which address they're responding from. It's not as good of a lead, but it works. It's a real, real simple way of making it happen. So that's the teaser letter. That's kind of how you make those happen. Now, if you want to focus on the persuasion letter, then it's a little bit different game because under the persuasion letter, you're not trying to just tease them with some information to get them to respond. What you're really trying to do on the persuasion letter is just as the letter, as the name uh, denotes, you're trying to get them to uh, uh, buy you because of the letter. And so now you've got to come up with information that causes them to favor you over someone else. Okay, and uh, and in order to do that, I want to come back to my notes just to make sure I'm uh, working on it well. So it gets a little bit more complex, but it's really, really powerful, okay? I've seen people, one of our clients we were working with, he was mailing into a geographic farm for a year, got no responses from it, no results, no clients. He came to us and we changed his marketing to what I'm about to share with you here. And what happened is uh, within about three and a half months of getting that marketing engaged, he was getting two Come List Me Now phone calls every week. That's eight a month simply by using a persuasion technique. And that persuasion technique starts with the understanding of what we call in marketing the outside perception versus inside reality concept. And here's what that means. Those people that you're, that you're mailing to, whether it's your personal list or whether it's that neighborhood list that's out there, okay, they view all agents as the same in, in, gen, in generalities, okay? They view you as just any other agent that all you guys do is you stick a sign in the yard, you list your, their home in the MLS, and you wait for someone else to bring a buyer. And because they believe that, it also they also believe that it doesn't matter which agent they choose to sell their home, they'll get the same result with any agent. So as long as you're competing against that mindset, there's very little you can do. So what you have to do is you have to change the rules of the game. You have to set the mindset that they ought to be interested in so that they choose you over others. And it's what we call the inside reality. The inside reality, the best way to describe it is if you think about your listing presentation. If you have the typical listing presentation where if you're using a flip chart 
or if you're using a, an iPad and you're going slide by slide, showing step by step the things that you do, your integrity, okay, your, uh, your marketing, your prospecting, how you prepare a home, and examples, okay, all these things, then basically the persuasion letter is a mini version of that. What it's trying to do is show off the things that you've done successfully that sets you apart from other agents. And, and here's something real interesting in marketing. The more specific it can be, the more powerful and believable it is. For example, if you say, my home sells faster than other agents, that's a generality. All agents will say that it's not very powerful. But if you can, if you can quantify and say, my home sells an average of three weeks faster than the typical agent, now you've got something. Now it's believable, okay? And there are some ways that you can do that. That'll probably be for another video. But what you want to do on the persuasion letter is then to start to bullet point out those things that you're good at and give a reason why. Integrity. You ought to choose me because of my integrity. And here's what my integrity means. Okay? Like I'm working with one agent and, and he was talking about integrity. I said, well, give me an example of what you mean by integrity because every agent says it. And every homeowner says, yeah, that's what all agents say, but how does it Im impact what you do? And so Ken, this agent I was talking to, was say, well, for example, I lost $15,000 on a sale. And I said, okay, tell me more. He said, I was representing the seller. We had two offers. One offer was from one of my buyers, and the other offer was from another buyer. And the other buyer's offer was, was a little bit better than mine. But I could have persuaded the seller to choose my buyer, and if he had, I would have made $15,000 more in commissions. So I said, okay, so what'd you do? He said, I did what was best for the seller, and I told him to go with the other agent's offer. So, because of that, I lost $15,000. Now, if you were to tell that in a persuasion letter, isn't that impressive? Doesn't that make you want to go, wow, I can trust him, okay? So what you want to do is you take persuasion, you take how you market your home. If you do prospecting, you talk about prospecting. You talk about your expertise and your skill. And you give a little example, a bullet point example, so that they can bite into and say, okay, that makes sense. And then, uh, here's something else about marketing also. If you're sending it out to a cold list, a list who doesn't know you, like a, uh, just out in the neighborhood someplace, it's going to take a lot of mailings before they start to trust you because they don't know you. But if you were to send that list to your personal list, people that you've already met before, that if they saw you on the street, they would wave hello and call you by name. If you send it to that list, you'll start to get immediate responses because they already know you and trust you. So the moral of that story is start with your personal list first and then start with your uh, non-personal list later. So um, uh, the other thing on this is if you're just getting started, my recommendation is start with the teaser letter first. It's a lot easier. They don't have to trust you. It makes you proactive. You don't get as big a response overall long term, but you get some immediate responses to pay for it and then to start to build up your business that way. Okay? So uh, if you like this video, please like it. Okay? Uh, comment on it and share it. And if you uh, want some help with what, w with what you're trying to do in terms of what we do as a service, please visit our website at agentdominator.info. Thanks for letting me share. Have a great day.